All right, uh, I'm going to read through Psalm 119. Um, so it's probably going to be a pretty long video. Um, but I read it the other day. And, you know, I've read it before, but really when I was reading it the other day, it was just unbelievable. Um, the depth of this psalm, when you understand the idioms throughout scripture. So, you know, before we get into it, I will just say, pardon me, the, uh, the Bible is written in idioms. Um, you know, these little repeated phrases or repeated words and, um, you know, when you piece them all together, you get a much fuller picture of what the scriptures are saying. Um, and all the way through this psalm, you keep seeing these, uh, these idioms and, you know, within the verse or the verses that are surrounding it, you get this like fuller picture of what the other places in scripture are talking about. You know, like I always kind of, I'll say that the Psalms and the Proverbs are, <clears throat> it's kind of like the, uh, the dictionary or the encyclopedia of of the Bible, you know, if you want to get a definition of something uh, that is throughout Scripture, you know, go to the Psalms and the Proverbs, and chances are it'll probably be there. You know, like, uh, you know, having been pure in heart, blessed are the pure in heart. Well, you go to the Psalm 24, and it tells you that the pure in heart have clean hands, and then you know Ezekiel 2 and 3 about hands, you know, having hands covered in blood, and rebuking people so that you don't have their blood on your hands, then, okay, now you know that the pure in heart are going to be fulfilling the royal law. But uh, anyway, we'll uh, we'll get into it. As I say, it's probably going to be a long one. Um, I might, maybe I'll even do like a part one and two, but we'll see. So verse one, blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. So I'll read each sort of section and then go back through it. So blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the way of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes, O forsake me not utterly. Okay, so you're going to see this all the way through this psalm, you know, just talking about the, the commandments and the instruction, which is the law, the Torah. Um, and the, just the ways of God are, are beautiful. Uh, and so all these Christians out there who say, oh, the commandments were a, a curse and a burden and, you know, we've been set free from the Ten Commandments. That is just the opposite of what David is saying here. David knew how beautiful the Sabbath was. He knew how beautiful it was to have no other gods and to not be committing idolatry. He, he knew how beautiful the world could be if no one was covetous and no one was lying and no one was committing adultery. And, um, and so that's, that's what it means to love God. It means to keep his commandments. Go read Deuteronomy 6 to see that. So blessed are the undefiled in the way. Well, the way is the covenant. So in Exodus 17, before Moses receives the verbal agreement to the holy covenant at Horeb, he's speaking to Jethro, his father-in-law. And um, Jethro says to the words of, you are going to teach <clears throat> the people the way wherein they must walk. And then uh, Exodus 23, it, it's prophecy of Yeshua, um, referring to him as an angel, the capital A angel. And he is going to lead Israel in the way. And his name is in the father's name. Or his name his, the father's name is in him. So Yehovah. Yeshua, Yeshua, um, and then blessed are they that are undefiled in the way. Well, who else do we know is undefiled? The very elect, Jacob, his servant, 144,000. They have no guile in their mouths. They haven't been defiled with, 
the ways of the world, they haven't been defiled by the strange woman, the whore church and all her abominations, you know, they are clean. They are, um, they haven't been polluted by either the world or by the church that is part of the world. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies. The testimony of Yeshua is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, so whenever you see here, blessed are they that keep his testimonies, it's talking about the people who don't despise prophecy. It's talking about the people who know the prophecies of the Son of God, the prophecies of Yeshua. They know the prophecies of the, the behavior of the end days church. They know the prophecies of the servants, good and evil. They know what they're supposed to be doing because God has written it in his word. And uh, blessed are they who read, hear, and do the things written in this book. That's Revelation 1. Okay, so you're not going to be able to, like, you, you can't be a servant if you don't read the book. Obviously. Um, yeah, we'll go on to the next one. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. So that's exactly what I've just said. How will a young man cleanse his way? So when you read like Psalm 51, and basically like I see Psalm 51 as the process of repenting and becoming a servant. You know, at the start, David is like, oh, Heavenly Father, I have sinned against you and you only. You know, forgive me of my transgressions. Then teach me your word. Then I will go and serve the people. I'll go and serve you and I'll go and find your people. I'll teach them the word of God. That's what it means to be a servant. Okay. But you, as I just said, you can only do that by taking heed to the words written in the book, by taking heed to prophecy. You can't go around being a servant if you don't know what prophecy says, because then you're just going to be presumptuous. And yet people still do that. And that's why you have all of these presumptuous teachers teaching fables and teaching false doctrines and you know, they just get so puffed up because they think they know the word, but they actually don't. They just want to appear as though they do. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wonder from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of your mouth. So all these people who say, oh, don't judge. Who are you to judge? God hates judgment. God's merciful. He's not judgmental. It literally all through our prophecy tells you that God loves judgment. He loves righteous judgment. He wants us to execute righteous judgment amongst each other. Like that's what the gospel is. Now we don't stone each other. We don't sacrifice animals. We judge righteous judgment and we help each other. We help each other worship God in spirit and truth. That's what we were supposed to be doing, but no one's been doing it. Instead, people just, you know, they'd rather not feel awkward because they have to rebuke someone. So they just keep their mouth shut. But then they suffer the consequences of sin on their neighbor and then their blood is on their hands. So then it, like, it doesn't matter which way you cut it. Because people haven't been rebuking the sin out of each other, the whole world has just gone to absolute shit. Like, sorry if you don't like us saying shit, but it's true. It's absolutely true. You know, you got that prophecy that those who make a man an offender for a word, even though he's standing in the gate, actually doing what God has told him to do. Look around you, like, look at the world. It's our fault. It's our fault, especially the Christians and especially the Jews and especially the people in the Torah movement. It's their fault because they haven't been spreading the gospel to the four corners of the world. God's not as like God is way less angry at atheists and agnostics than he is with Christians. Way, way, way less angry. Because how do, they don't know what to do. They don't claim to follow God. They don't read his word. Christians do though. Jews do. Torah movement people do. And what are they doing with it? Nothing. Um, 
Verse 14, I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on thy precepts and I will have respect unto your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. So to meditate on his precept. Isaiah 28 tells us to read line upon line, precept upon precept. And that's what I'm talking about with the idioms. Like, you know, you can't. So let's say um, Hosea 6.6, 6, for example. Yeshua quotes that in two different places in Matthew, Matthew 9 and Matthew 12. Okay. If you hear the Messiah say, I will have mercy, you know, as it is written, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, then go find where he's quoting. And then once you've found where he's quoting, say, go to the Psalms or go to Deuteronomy and learn what mercy is. Then you know that that's what Hosea was quoting. Then the Messiah quotes it. You get a full picture rather than just seeing your Messiah quote it and say, oh, I'll just figure out for myself what, you know, I'll just make it up in my own head what mercy and sacrifice means. I'll, I'll make it up in my head what the knowledge of God is. No, you got to go and search these things out. You got to meditate on the precepts. Otherwise, you'll never understand anything. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. That's what has happened with the whole world. They, noisy birds. Um, they, they, you've all forgotten his word. Like when the Messiah commands us all to watch, because you've forgotten Ezekiel 2 and 3, you're not watching. You're asleep. You're dumb. You're dumb. Verse 17. Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep your word. So deal him bountifully. He's going he's gonna to have mercy on us. He showed mercy to us through the sacrifice of Yeshua. And now... We can receive the spirit of truth so that we can learn his word so that we can go and teach people what his word says. That's why you receive the spirit of truth. So deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep your word. So if you're keeping his word, then you are going to be a servant and you will go and teach people what the, what the Bible says. Otherwise, you're not a servant. And if you do that, then you're just uh, fulfilling Hebrews 10, 28 and 29. Open thou my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. OK, so if you become a servant and you receive the spirit of truth, then you're going to start receiving meat and juice season. Hebrews 5 tells us who and why receives meat and juice season. OK, now. Part of that meat and juice season is that God's going to start revealing things to you that no one else can see. In perfect example, the key of David. He tells us in Hosea 8 that I have written unto them the great things of my law, but they count them as a strange thing. Okay, now there's so many things that the servants are going to receive that no one else will receive. And the key of David is a perfect example. Okay, when you actually meditate on the precepts and you meditate on the testimonies, you start seeing things. God starts showing you things that are just mind blown. And the key of David is a perfect example. It's a wondrous thing of his law. But so many people just count it as a strange thing because they can't see it because they're not servants. It's exactly what Yeshua was rebuking the Pharisees for in Matthew 12. If you had known what this means, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, you wouldn't have condemned the guiltless. Okay, so Hosea 6.6, 6, which is what he's quoting, is all about fulfilling the royal law. Okay, so he's saying if you had knew to fulfill the royal law, if you had entered into the servanthood work, then you might have received the key of David because it's only going to be received of by servants. And if you had received the key of David, you wouldn't have condemned the guiltless because you would have known that Yeshua and the disciples had the key of David. So they weren't breaking the Sabbath. That's what Matthew 12 is about. People who say, oh, he's saying that, you know, they don't have to keep the Sabbath anymore. That's just ridiculous. That is so ridiculous. Verse 20, my soul breaketh for longing that hath unto judgments at all times. Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do error from your commandments. Remove, me fr remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept thy testimonies. 
Princes also did sit and speak against me, but your servant did meditate in thy statutes. Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. You see again, so as, I, as I've said, anytime you see testimonies, think prophecy. Your prophecies also are my delight and my counselors. So if you are meditating on prophecy and you're actually uh, studying it out with that humble and contrite spirit that trembles at his word, then it doesn't matter who comes up against you. It doesn't matter, you know, these evil servants that rise up and they just try to destroy mine and my brother's work. We just sit there and we're like, wow, prophecy is being fulfilled because we know the prophecies of the evil servants. It doesn't bother us. It doesn't get to us. It doesn't offend us. It's just like we praise God because it's like, all right, prophecy is fulfilling like before our eyes. Verse uh, 25. My soul cleaveth unto dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. I have declared my ways and thou heardest me. Teach me thy statutes. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to thy word. Remove from me the way of lying and grant me thy law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have stuck unto your testimonies, your prophecy. O Lord, put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandment when thou shalt enlarge my heart. I have stuck unto your testimonies. Okay, so like, like within prophecy, like let's take Ezekiel 2 and 3. Again, we talk about this all the time, but Ezekiel 2 and 3, the call and the watch. Okay, it says that he makes your head hard against these rebellious people who you have to go and warn. Well, why would he have to make our heads hard against them if they were going to accept us with open arms and be so pleased to hear the truth? Yeah, they're not. They're not going to be pleased to hear the truth. They are going to hate you if you speak the truth. The Messiah told us this. He said, because they hated me, they're going to hate you. Because if you're saying the same thing, then they're going to hate you. And that's because the Messiah was telling us that, it, that it's the same spirit of truth. It's the same spirit of God that is in us that was in him. So if you are truly being led by the spirit of truth and speaking the word of God, people are going to hate you. So there's a lot of people who they start to realize that. And so they go soft and they start to twist the word a little bit and they start to miss out certain things and they start to have respect of persons and they they won't go the full distance because they don't want to be hated. Okay, but look at what he's saying here. I have stuck unto your testimony, testimonies. Oh Lord, put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments. You know, like you can't just, if you just do what God has told you to do, he will look after you. He'll protect you. He'll give you this hard head, but a big heart where you are just full of forgiveness. Like all these people who slander me and, you know, gossip and say whatever, all manner of evil. I don't hate them. I'm not angry at them. I don't get offended. I feel bad for them. I feel sorry for them. Because I know what it, I know what it is in those people that is causing them to do that. It's because they hate God. They hate God. They hate the spirit of God that is speaking through me. But if you just keep doing what God has told you to do, he just keeps giving you more understanding so that like the more you understand prophecy, the more you realize that if you do this work, even though you're hated, you're putting a big smile on God's face. And it's like all these people who come up against you, it's going to be to their own shame. So just like let them do it. Look at what Yeshua said to Judas, that that thou doest do quickly. He knew that Judas had to betray him. But he just let him do it because prophecy has to be fulfilled. So it's just like that with the evil servants. You know, like we've had people in the group where they're like, oh, you know, this say some guy falls and then people will be like, oh, he's not evil, though. Like he's still our brother. We just have differences like blah, 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 blah. no, that's not what prophecy says. 
It says that if anyone brings any other doctrine, have nothing to do with that person. Don't bid them Godspeed. Don't welcome them to your house. And it's the house of prayer. Don't welcome them to the gathering. You know, like I'll have an evil servant come into my house, but I'm going to rebuke him. But I'm not going to have him come into the gathering unless it's to repent. You know, like uh, you can't, like you, you cannot go soft. You can't go soft. So many people think that if they just soften the word of God, people will be more open to it. Yeah, they will be more open to it because you've made the word of God soft. But then God's going to send his judgment and all of those people are going to get the hardest slap across the face they've ever received. So like, if you think my rebuke is sharp, wait until you face the fathers. Verse 33, teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. So you're going to keep saying throughout this psalm that he's saying, I will observe your instruction, your law, your commandments, your testimonies with my whole heart. Okay, then you've got the commandment to love God with all of your mind, soul, heart and strength. Okay, so to love God with all of that is not just to say, oh God, I love you so much. Like, no, he's not a puppy. You don't just go, no, like to actually love God with all of your heart, soul, mind and strength means that you listen to his full instruction. You obey his full instruction and you serve him as he has commanded you to serve him. According to the law and the prophets. This is how we serve. Like all the law and the prophets told us how to serve him. And then the Messiah came and he set the example and he showed us exactly what that looks like. And then the apostles followed suit and just further expounded on how it's going to look if you are a servant and how to deal with people who are wicked servants, how to deal with, uh, you know, how to just deal with things as a servant. Okay, and then all these Christians are just completely ignorant of the fact that all of the apostles in Yeshua, was en they were endlessly quoting the Old Testament, the Law and the Prophets. And because they have disregarded the Law and the Prophets, they can't serve. They don't know how to serve. And so they don't love God with all of their heart, soul, mind and strength. <laughs> Incline my heart unto your testimonies and not to covetousness. Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity and quicken thou me in thy way. Establish thy word unto your servant who is devoted to thy fear. So the fear of God is keeping the commandments. So a servant is devoted to the Ten Commandments. Well, all you Christians are saying we don't have to keep the Ten Commandments. But servants are devoted to the Ten Commandments. Put two and two together. You are not a servant. Not even close. You're an evil servant, actually. You're a, you're a tear. You're a thorn. Turn away my reproach, which I fear, for thy judgments are good. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me in thy righteousness. Let thy mercies come also unto me, O Lord, even thy salvation, according to thy word. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me, for I trust thy I trust in thy word, and take not thy word of truth utterly from out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy judgments. So shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever, and will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings, and will not be ashamed. And I will delight myself in your commandments, which I have loved. My hands also will, will I lift up unto your commandments, which I have loved. And I will meditate in thy statutes. So look at this. I have hoped in thy judgments. Okay, so David knew that the Messiah was going to come. He knew exactly what the Messiah was going to do when he did come. Because David knew 
what God desired. David had a heart after, David was a man after God's own heart. He knew exactly what God desired, that he did desire mercy and that he did desire that we receive the knowledge of God instead of, uh, instead of sacrifice and burnt offering. So David says, I have hoped in thy judgments. He knows that the gospel, the refreshing of the covenant was to come. And that is what he desires. He, he, his heart is full of joy for the refreshing of the covenant because he knew prophecy. He knew the prophecy of the Messiah. David knew Deuteronomy 18. He knew that the sacrificial law had been added to the covenant. And he knew that at some point God was going to raise up a prophet just like Moses who is going to teach the people everything Israel desired at Horeb. He hoped in the judgment of God, the righteous judgment. And then here we are, and we've received the gospel. And instead, you just tread underfoot the Son of God and count the blood of the covenant, wherewith you are sanctified an unholy thing. And you do despite unto the spirit of conviction. I will walk at liberty. What does Paul call the royal law? The law of liberty. Okay, because Yeshua was prophesied to come and set the captives free. He was the liberator. The law of liberty. No longer are you under the sacrificial law. Here's the royal law. Go and love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 49. Remember the word unto your servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. The proud have had me greatly in derision, yet have I not declined from your law. I remembered thy judgments of old, O Lord, and have comforted myself. Horror hath taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night, and have kept your law. This I had, because I kept thy precepts. Thou art my portion, O Lord, I have said that I would keep your words. I entreated thy favour with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to your word. You see how he's constantly referring back to the word. You know, there's, David knew that presumptuousness was a great sin. And so he's always saying, according to your word, according to your testimonies, according to your precepts, according to your statutes. Because you can't just be presumptuous and make things up for yourself. You have to always uh, bring two or three, four or five even witnesses. And that's not what you are doing in the church. Like... You just make things up for yourself. Oh, I don't know what that means. Instead of searching it out, I'll just make it up for myself. Like the pre-trib rapture. Where the hell do you get that from? Where do you get that from? First Thessalonians 4 and 5 is not talking about a pre-trib rapture. It's talking about people who are going to have to comfort themselves with these words after they've just survived great tribulation and read 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty two for a second witness to that. <clears throat> I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. I made haste and delayed not to keep your commandments. The bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten your law. At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. I am a companion of all them that fear thee, and of them that keep thy precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of mercy. Teach me thy statutes. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge. I will have mercy and not sacrifice and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Teach me good judgment. Mercy is good judgment. And the knowledge of God is meat and due season that only the servants who are executing righteous judgment will receive. For I have believed in your commandments. Come on. Man. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I have kept your word. Thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, 
but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat geese, but I uh, fat sorry, your their heart is as fat as grease. But I delight in your law. Is is it good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes? The law of my mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. Like, how can any Christian read this and think that the commandments are a curse? Like, do you think David was really talking about this curse and this burden in such a positive way? Like, why? Why would he be speaking about a curse in this way? Like, he's clearly talking about this beautiful thing. Like, it's so frustrating. I don't know what, I don't know how else to say it for you people to hear it. <sighs> they that fear thee will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in thy word. I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thou in faithfulness hath afflicted me. Let, I pray thee, thy merciful kindness be my comfort, according to the word unto thy servant. Let thy tender mercies come unto me, that I may live, for your law is my delight. Let the proud be ashamed, uh, that have dealt perversely with me without cause, but I will meditate in thy precepts. Let those that fear turn unto me, and those that have known thy testimonies, let my heart be sound in thy statutes, that I be not ashamed. My soul fainteth for thy salvation, but, my, but I hope in your word. You see, again, for my soul fainteth for, my salvation, for your salvation. David knew how the salvation was going to come. He knew that the Messiah was going to come and he knew what the Messiah was going to do. He hopes in his word. He knows the only reason David knew was because he knew the prophets of the Messiah, the prophecies of the Messiah. So when Yeshua is always telling you to go and learn of him, he's telling you to go and learn the prophecies of him. My eyes fail for thy word, saying, when wilt thou comfort me? For I am become like a bottle in, in the smoke. Yet do I forget, yet do I not forget thy statutes. How many days of thy servant, how many are the days of thy servant, when wilt thou execute judgment on them that persecute me? So that's got to be, you know, uh, Revelation 6 at the fifth seal, the saints under the altar, that's got to be a reference to that. You see, and this is a perfect example. You get a full understanding when you actually study the word, because now I say, okay, Revelation 6 and uh, Psalm 119, verse 84, connected. The proud have digged pits for me, which are not after your law. All thy commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully. Help thou me. They had almost consumed me upon earth, but I forsook not thy precepts. Quicken me after thy loving kindness, so shall I keep the testimony of your mouth. So the love and kindness of God is his conviction again. Um, can see that in Jeremiah 30, I think, maybe 31. Um, yeah, Jeremiah 31, verse 3. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. So God draws you to him through his conviction. So his loving kindness is his conviction. Uh, verse 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth, and it abideth. 
They continue this day according to thine ordinances, for all are thy servants. Unless thy law had been my delights, I should have then perished in my affliction. I will never forget thy precepts, for with them thou hast quickened me. I am thine, save me, for I have sought thy precepts. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me, but I will consider thy testimonies. I have seen the end of all perfection, but thy commandment is exceeding broad. So even look at what he's saying in verse 95 there. This is what I'm saying. The wicked have waited to destroy me, but I will just consider your testimonies, your prophecy. Okay, so like, you know that people are going to try and destroy you and attack you and, you know, destroy the work that you've done. But if you just study prophecy, then it's just going to be like water off a duck's back. Because you know that these people have to do this. They have to rise up against you. They have to try and destroy you because it's prophecy. So it has to happen. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou hast Thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for my for your testimonies are my meditation. So there you go. Like this is how we know David. Like David knew the law better than his teachers. He knew the instruction of God better than anyone. You know, like th this is why it's even the key of David. You know, people are always like, oh, Moses did it first. Why isn't it the key of Moses? Moses gave the example, but David knew that. He knew that that was in the law because he actually studied the law. He studied the, he studied the instruction of God. He knew the testimonies. He knew prophecy. I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep your word. Like, I'm kind of just like reading this now because I, what else do I need to say? It just speaks for itself. It's unbelievable. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep your word. Okay, like... Every evil way is not talking about stereotypical evil things that people do in the world. No, the evil way is teaching fables, is disregarding things written in prophecy, despising prophecy, leading people astray. But he has refrained his feet from the evil way through keeping God's word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are your words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. This is what I'm saying. When you actually study the word of God, he sees that you are seeking to be obedient. And so he gives you more meat and juice season. And with that meat and juice season, you continue executing the uh, righteous judgment. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. I have sworn and will perform it, that I will keep thy righteous judgments. Like, it's just repeating the same thing over and over. Because you are studying the word, because you actually know his instruction, you will keep his righteous judgments. So if you aren't, keep, if you aren't executing righteous judgment, it's because you aren't studying his word. You don't know what the Bible says if you aren't fulfilling the royal law. You've missed the whole gospel. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according unto your word. Accept, I beseech thee, the free will offerings of my mouth. O Lord, and teach me thy judgments. My soul is continually in my hand. Yet do I not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me. Yet I erred not from your precepts. Because again, he knows prophecy. He knows when these people try and destroy him. To just, like, it's prophecy. So just don't get hung up on it. Just let them do it. Thy testimonies have I taken as a heritage forever. 
for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform thy statutes always, even unto the end. <clears throat> I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Depart from me, you evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. So uh, my brother Keller, he even pointed this one out the other day. This is incredible. When Yeshua says, you know, when all these people come to him and they say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name? And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. Depart from me, you evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. So all you people in the church who think that, oh, because you've always prayed in the name of Jesus, and you think that you've, uh, you know, you've, you've loved God, and you've loved your neighbor, you haven't, because you haven't done it according to the word, and you haven't been keeping his commandments. Uphold me according unto thy word, that I may live, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Hold thou me up, and I will be safe, and I will have respect unto thy statutes continually. Thou hast trodden down all them that err from your statutes, for their deceit is falsehood. Thou putteth away all the wicked of the earth like dross, therefore I love testimonies. My flesh trembleth for fear. And I am afraid of thy judgments. I have done judgment and justice. So go and read Isaiah 1. Like all these people in the Torah movement who are doing the feasts, profaning them, feeding their own bellies, not watching the dumb dogs that are asleep. He commands them, stop doing that and go and learn to do judgment and to seek justice. Go and fulfill the royal law. Go and love your neighbor as yourself. Stop feeding your own belly. Be surety for thy servant for good. Let not the proud oppress me. Mine eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. Deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy and teach me thy statutes. I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know your testimonies. Again, give me the spirit of truth so that I can understand prophecy so I can go and fulfill the royal law. That's why we receive the spirit of truth. Pardon me. It is time for thee, O Lord, to work, for they have made void thy law. All you people who have destroyed the instruction of God, he is going to judge you so harshly because you've led so many people astray. Therefore, I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. Thy testimonies are wonderful, therefore doth my soul keep them. The entrance of thy words giveth light, it giveth understanding unto the simple. I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed after thy commandments. Look thou upon me, and be merciful unto me, as thou used to do to those that love thy name. Order my steps in thy word. Let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep thy precepts. Make my face to shine upon, upon thy servant, and teach me thy statutes. Rivers of water run down my eyes, because they keep not your law. So here's one for the Torah movement. You know, a true servant of God, when he sees people, and when they see people just destroying the commandments, they, they hate God's commandments, that should break your heart because you know how beautiful the commandments of God are and you know the judgment that's coming to those who don't obey them. You know, you understand prophecy, you know some of the awful things that are going to happen and that should break your heart. But the people in the Torah movement... They just like, they think they're all mighty and holier than thou. And they think, oh, it's stupid Christians. Blah, 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 blah. No, like go and, go and try and help them. 
don't just sit back and think, oh, well, I'm made in the shade because I keep the Babylonian Jewish polluted Sabbath. Go and find the lost brothers and sisters of the Northern Kingdom. Righteous art thou, O Lord, and upright in thy judgments. Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. My zeal hath consumed me because mine enemies have forgotten your words. Your word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. I am small and despised, yet do I not forget your precepts. So you got an Amos talking about the 144,000. He says, how will Jacob arise? For he is small. But then in, uh, what is it? I think it might be Jeremiah 31 again, actually. Um... Mm -mm -mm -mm. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it's Jeremiah 30. I can't find where it is. So, yeah, Amos, it talks about how will Jacob arise for he is small. But then in Jeremiah 31, it must be Jeremiah 31, maybe I just can't find it. It says, uh, you know, Jacob will no longer be small. Okay. So the 144,000 right now, like people don't know who they are. They're, they have a small voice. They're trying to reach people and they're trying to help people. But you've got this overwhelming amount of apostate Christians and a huge amount of people in the Torah movement who are just so much louder and they're leading so many people astray. And these, these true servants who are actually trying to help them, they're despised of the Christians and of the people in the Torah movement and of the Jews. They're despised because they're calling them out for being wicked servants and they're trying to help God's people. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. So if his righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, how come Yeshua came along and ended the righteousness of God? You see, it makes no sense. Trouble and anguish have taken hold on me, yet thy commandments are my delights. The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. I cried with my whole heart, hear me, O Lord. I will keep your statutes. I cried unto thee, save me, and I shall keep your testimonies. I will keep your prophecies. I will obey the words written in the book of the prophets. I have prevented the dawning of the morning and cried. I hoped in thy word. My eyes prevent the night watches that I might meditate in thy word. Hear my voice according unto your loving kindness. Remember, love and kindness is grace, it's conviction. O oh Lord, quicken me according to thy judgment. So all these uh, verses leading up to the love and kindness there, it's David saying like, I've been going against you and I repent. So teach me what I'm supposed to do. And then he gives you the spirit of grace and he'll teach you. He'll convict you of what you're supposed to do and what you shouldn't do. And then you go teach people the word. They draw nigh that follow after mischief. They are far from thy law. Thou art near, O Lord, <coughs> and all thy commandments are truth. Concern, concerning your testimonies, I have known of old that thou hast founded them forever. Prophecy doesn't change. Prophecy tells us that the whole church is going to be apostate in this generation and that servants are going to rise up to warn them but no one's going to want to listen to them because they're small. They have a small voice. Consider my affliction and deliver me and deliver uh, and deliver me for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and deliver me. 
Quicken me according to your word. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not thy statutes. Great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Quicken me according to thy judgments. Many are persecutors and my enemies, yet do I not decline from thy testimonies. I beheld the transgressors and was grieved because they have kept not thy word. Consider how I have loved thy precepts. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. So, loving your neighbor as yourself was all the way back in Leviticus. And, uh, you know, that is what it means to, well, to fulfill the royal law is to love your neighbor as yourself. And it means to rebuke sin. So that's always been there. His righteous judgments have always been. You even look at uh, Cain and Abel. And, uh, you know, Cain says, what, am I my brother's keeper? And that pissed God off. Like, yeah, you're supposed to be looking out for one another. And that's even what the Christians say. Oh, well, let each person be, in, you know, let each person worry about their own salvation. That's not what, that's not what the Bible says at all. It says we look out for each other's salvation. We don't suffer sin upon each other. The princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. Uh, I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. I hate and abhor lying, but thy law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. So go read the end of Isaiah 54. You know, these people who gather together, but not by God, they gather together against the servants. And, uh, you know, they're going to speak all manner of evil against you. They're going to persecute you and revile you. But he says, no weapon that is formed will come against you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me. Lord, I have hoped for thy salvation and done thy commandments. My soul hath kept your testimonies and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies for all thy ways are, are before me. Let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my suppl supplication come before thee and deliver me according to thy word. My lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Let thine hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord, and thy law is my delight. My soul, let my soul live, and it shall praise thee, and let thy judgments help me. We're supposed to be judging each other righteously, and to help, and, that, and then, then we help each other. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. So then you go read Isaiah 53, the prophecy of the Messiah. I literally just turned right to Isaiah 53, praise God. Um, and it says in verse 6, And we, like all we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. And then look at what the last verse says. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. So we've all gone astray like lost sheep. We've all broken the commandments. And God does lay all of that iniquity on you, sure. But you then have to turn around and start keeping the commandments. You don't just get to keep adding your iniquity onto them. Like that's not how it works. I mean, praise God, if you truly are seeking to be obedient and you do stumble and you do sin, like, yes, you will be forgiven of that. 
but to do it willfully, which the Christians are doing. They just like outright don't want to keep the Sabbath. They, um, they will not give up this Christmas and Easter, that, this idolatry. They hate the idea of giving up their idols. They won't give up their graven images. They're full of covetousness. They're full of envy and jealousy and pride and bitterness and hate. You have, you have not the love of God in you. Read someone like I was get my plan was to like really just like go through it really slowly and explain every verse. But like it just speaks for itself. Like I don't have anything else. To, well, I mean, I, I would really I could do some cross connections, but that psalm is just so beautiful. How anyone could read that psalm and think that the Ten Commandments is a curse and a burden. It's just disgusting. Like David loved the Holy Covenant, and so should you. So, yeah. <laughs>